This is Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people with special needs. I shudder thinking how the world can be so cruel. I lend my voice to those who can't. It's time we try, it's time we care, it's time we stand. It starts with the war. Welcome to the Special Chronicles podcast. My name is Daniel Spukowski. I'm the founder of Special Chronicles and a Southern Survivor Global Messenger alum with Special Olympics and a service ambassador at United Airlines and a combat energy force ambassador. Uh, our website is specialchronicles.com, where you can stream my archives of over 750 episodes absolutely for free. And a follow Special Chronicles on social media, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Again, specialchronicles.com. This week on the Special Chronicles podcast, we're celebrating Oath Day, talking all about trees and tree efficiency is the topic on this latest episode of our Comed Energy Force series, season seven, part three. Calvin Limbrick, Senior Vegetation Management Program Manager at ComEd, is our guest. So please put your virtual hands together as we welcome Calvin on the Special Chronicles podcast and our ComEd Energy Force series. Welcome, Calvin. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Good, Good to, to have you on. We are almost in the same studio, same virtual studio. Well, we are, <laughs> we're right next to each other. Yeah, we're, we're right next to you. You, you, you. You're in the same studio. Yeah. You, um, we we just have two two different camera angles. That's how that's how high tech we are. <laughs> Uh, with with that, it's so excited. I'm excited to have you on. Um, I know we've um, we were connected with um, the marketing team at Comed, uh, and I'm glad that you um, you had uh, dropped me a note this morning and had time on my calendar amid both of our witty um, busy <laughs> schedules on this Monday. But uh, I'm excited to to have you on the program. Yeah. So yeah, why don't I'm we? Very happy to be here. So, it out. Awesome. So why don't we go ahead and get, get the get it um, kickstarted with uh, having you into uh, first before we get into the the main topic um, and share how we got connected. Um, uh, well, thanks to the Combat Energy Force Ambassador Program, but in particular, if you have a connection to our disability community, and then tell us about your role at Combat. Yeah, so uh, my my role at Combat is is I I'm on the transmission team uh, with vegetation management, um, but I do have some roles in in, in distribution as well. Um, predominantly, uh, I, I, I do a little bit of everything. Um, my, my favorite stuff is the restoration work. So I get to go out. Uh, I help put prairie underneath the rights of way as we remove uh, the incompatible trees that might grow up underneath it. Um, and I make room for the, the birds, the bees, the butterflies. But I also uh, I also maintain the right of way after it's trimmed on the transmission or on the distribution side rather. Sorry, uh, I make sure that our 34 kilovolt lines um, uh, don't have any interruptions halfway through the cycle, uh, and and I keep keep the lights on. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I, I know uh, our listeners of at least the past seven years have known that Comet is all about. How keeping the, the lights on and powering lives, uh, <laughs> and so with with that, uh, as we kind of as this episode, uh, people could listen to this listen to this podcast on demand anytime. But this episode is, as the kids say, is uh, uh, dropping on um, Oath Day, which is April twenty second. I believe yeah, April twenty second. 
So with that, um, how, uh, if, how how can trees help keep your homes more energy efficient in the summer and the winter due to shade placement? If our listeners, like, I think you, one of the episodes that you listened to was our Energy Savings 101 um, episode. So if our listeners go back, just go on specialchronicles.com and uh, click listen, and then you, you can search for our Energy Savings 101 episode. Uh, and we'll put a link to a news release that Kamed um, recently put out. Uh, that um, honestly, I will um, throw down that fourth wall and be transparent and say, I have honestly, I have not clicked through and read that news release. <laughs> so well, as of the time, <laughs> I, know, I know it's <laughs> if the marketing team of them, if they know. <laughs> We don't, we don't have to tell them. They don't have to know any of this. <laughs> Maybe I might actually edit this out. Let's, let's make a note of that. Six minutes into the episode, let's make a note of editing it out. Okay. You know what? Yeah, I'll just, we'll, we'll make a note. We, we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out. Um, with that. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's 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 realistic. That's what this podcast is. It's all about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a reality show on as a podcast, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. How can so share with us? How can trees help keep your? Because um, uh, our listeners will recall that energy savings quiz. That um, I know that as energy force ambassadors, we educate the public about that. Um, we've um. Uh, if you listen back to that Energy Savings 101 episode that I did uh, the, um, in January, uh, I think it came out January 1st, whatever that book is. Uh, we, one of the questions has to do with energy efficient being in the summer and in the winter. And so I think this question kind of will hopefully clear, will go more in depth to, uh, to answer that question. And so, how can trees help keep? Your home's more energy efficient in the summer and the winter due to shade um, placement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, one thing I'll say is that outside of shade placement, trees do an amazing amount of things for us. The list is is almost endless, uh, and and could, each one could probably be its own uh, own episode, but. Um, <laughs> So planting a tree, if you can, is is probably one of the best things you can on account of the shade. Um, uh, that tends to be more for the summer. So if you're going, if you're looking to plant a tree in your yard, uh, you want to look at where the sun hits your house the most, or your apartment, or whatever you're living in. Um, there are different sized trees for all different kinds of situations, and uh, you know maybe you need to convince your neighbor to plant the tree to get the benefit. But ideally, if you look at sort of the south side of uh, wherever you're living, that's where the the sun is going to be the most intense midday. In the east, you've got the sunrise, so you you want maybe a little bit of light to help reduce your um, uh, electrical usage. You're you're switching on the lights uh, um, on a day-to-day basis, so having that morning light is nice, but having that that midday sun uh, is can be really intense, and it makes your air conditioner work a little bit too hard. So look to the south side of wherever you're living. Find a nice space that's a good distance away from. your your structure. You don't want to play, place anything too close to your house. You don't want it too close to the power lines. So trying to find that happy medium of where you can put a tree and then making sure that you're picking the right tree for the right place. Um, a good example is the uh, the bur oak is an absolutely massive gorgeous tree. Um, it's it's pretty close to the white oak, which is our state tree here in Illinois, uh, and uh, it it supports about 500 different pollinators. Uh, or insects, sorry, not all of them are pollinators, 500 different insects, and indirectly and directly a lot of birds and mammals uh, too. So you might want that tree, but it also gets really tall and really wide. So you would have to place it a ways away from your house. It's a great shade tree to reduce the impact uh, of of what your air conditioner is going to have to do to work, Um, but you want to make sure you're picking the right spot. Awesome, awesome. And can you, as we continue to talk about, because uh, this this episode is all about trees for you and me, 
<laughs> feel like uh, it could uh, <laughs> Sesame Street could uh, <laughs> could uh, yeah, use this. Yeah, <laughs> with it. it's, yeah it's, it, I I love the title that you came up with. It, it's it's family kids kid friendly and you know uh, uh, comment on the benefits that trees can provide to customers who weak out in energy efficiency using the example. Uh, full-grown trees can shade and cool houses in the summer and block yeah, strong winds in the winter with the potential to reduce energy bills by 20%. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you comment mm-hmm. on the benefits that trees can provide to customers regarding energy e- efficiency? Yeah, so I, I think the big one is that trees, when they cast shade, obviously shade's a little bit cooler than... Um, than the direct sunlight, but also uh, through transpiration. So the trees take in water through their roots and they send it up their leaves. And on a hot day, they release all that water as a means of, of cooling themselves. And so you actually get a cooling air effect on the house. So your tree is almost like its own kind of an air conditioner um, on that south side of the house blocking the sun. In the winter, you have a, a couple more options, really planting anything. So you could do a deciduous tree that leaves out because in the winter, really, uh, one of the reasons I say do a deciduous tree on the south side of the house is when those leaves drop, we want that warmth from the winter to come in on the south side to actually heat our house a little bit and leaf bills that way. But on the north side or even on the west side here in Illinois, we get a lot of winds out of the west, the westerlies. That's where a lot of our storms come from is the north northwest. So by putting um, either some of the uh, evergreen trees, uh, white pines are an absolutely gorgeous uh, state tree that we have. Um, or tree that's native to the state is what I meant to say. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> or you um, are very popular. Um, junipers are very popular, planting those, or just really any tree to, to sort of break that wind. But uh, the more dense you get, again, you want to make sure you're picking the right tree and putting it in the right spot. But having that wind barrier will reduce the amount of uh, heat that your house will have to be producing constantly. Um, or if you live in an older house, sometimes there are a lot more gaps that need to be sealed. If you haven't taken the time to seal that, that wind break will also help the air moving yeah. through and taking the heat. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, that uh, was really beneficial for our uh, uh, listeners. And uh, with um, with that, uh, you and others probably hear some background music that's coming up. Um, we're going to take, take a quick brief uh, sponsor, uh, Ed Rake, and we'll come back to talk all about Comrad Ewound Tree Trimming. Talk all about trimming those trees. Uh, as we a water break, and uh, I have to do a live. I have to do a live Ed Weeds. I don't know if I can take a total, total, total water break. <laughs> I'll take a water break when Coven when you talk in the next segment. And so with with that. Support for Special Chronicles comes from listeners like you. Please support this podcast to operate our studio and pay our monthly website, podcast, and video recording studio hosting. Will you please visit specialchronicles.com slash give. That's specialchronicles.com slash give with a monthly or one-time donation today to support this podcast. And we thank you for your generous support of Special Chronicles. And with that, uh, I try to fade that off. Oh, <laughs> is it patient? And as I now finally take my, my water break, as we, we, we now move, move into uh, Comed year-round tree trimming. This is actually, um, this is a topic that um, uh, is actually news to me, <laughs> news new, news and new to, to me, uh, and I'm sure I'm I'm sure a lot of our listeners it might 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 be new to them as well, or maybe they they've heard about it before. But uh, so I'm I'm that's why I'm really looking forward to learning more about this topic and I'm sure our listeners all as well. How how does does Comrade Tree Trimming support our reliable grid? Yeah, so Comrade uh, has has tree trimming because. One of the things that we we sort of have to deal with is everybody likes trees in their yard, uh, and and even if it's not in a nice manicured yard uh, with with trees that are loved and well cared for, if you let anywhere go 
long enough, the tree pops up. They, they're pretty good about finding space and uh, coming in wherever they can. So we have a couple different programs that, uh, that we manage throughout the combat system. Um, the big one is that uh, our transmission and our distribution uh, circuits are all on a uh, are all in cycles. So transmission is a five year cycle, distribution is a four year cycle, and the idea is that um, one year out of that cycle will go through and remove or trim or uh, uh, make any changes that we need to in order to maintain a proper clearance. Different voltages have different clearances because we don't want uh, something to grow in and cause a problem during the rest of that cycle. So the idea is we should be able to touch it during that for five years and then just move on. Um, uh, some of our other programs have, uh, or some of our other uh, circuits, or we have other programs that are designed to enhance that that cycle. So uh, one of the ones that I run, the mid-cycle program for our 34 kVs, uh, we go through in year two, and we take a quick look to make sure that those higher voltage, line, voltage lines uh, don't have anything that might cause an issue in the next two years. So we just give them a quick double check. A lot of times we're looking for trees that might have uh, limbs that aren't well attached or maybe have developed some sort of an issue uh, over the last uh, two years, or I guess it's four years on the mid-cycle cycle, but uh, I don't <laughs> want to get too complicated with dates and timing. Um, but um, we just take a little bit of a closer look, uh, having our contractors plan them out and make sure that the health of the tree along those lines is in good standing and we're not worried about anything hitting in the next two years. Um, and then from there, we also look at lines that are maybe a little bit more vulnerable or serve um, different venues, serve airports. Uh, those are all different programs that we, we want to enhance and make sure that uh, if there is something that could go wrong, we're preventing outages on um, either lines that we're concerned about or in areas that that require a bit more attention to to run. Uh, you know, we wouldn't want anything happening to O'Hare on account of uh, vegetation and the common power line. So that is a, an annual sort of a thing. Hospitals are another really big one that we, we consider. Um, and then different, uh, different neighborhoods that may see um, uh, more outages than others get a lot of attention because we want to reduce those amount and, and increase that safety and reliability. Uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm glad that you, you mentioned, especially at, at Hoheo, uh, as a, a long time listeners will know, um, I um, also um, uh, work uh, at United Airlines um, based at Hoheo Airport. So yeah, I, I definitely know that's, <laughs> Definitely uh, important. Um, quick follow-up question that I have for you related uh, to what you talked about what, related to tree trimming uh, with all reliable grid. Um, and th and th this m m may or hopefully is related, but I know a lot of um, uh, maybe not necessarily, um, you know, uh, what's it? In all um, was a dentro, um, uh, but I, I a lot in the cities this is happening, um, where we've got uh, um, green woofs on 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 woofs, um, and I'm assuming like there those maybe not big oak trees on on on, on, on our green woofs, but it might be small. Trees. You kind of comment on on how. This tree trimming is related to uh, um, green woofs. You know, I'm I'm not sure that they they tie too much together. So you have a good point. There's the uh, the green roofs definitely are not going to have any trees in them. A lot of times, green roofs they they have the shorter growing vegetation, uh, and the the soil isn't as deep. So I don't know that you'd get anything all that tall on them. Um, okay. If I think, think if they did, it, it might fall out. So it's usually a <laughs> shorter growing grasses and plants and and things like that. So uh, you know that's it's not something that's come across my plate. Uh, trimming and okay. green and in, in green roofs. I haven't I haven't had the pop the question pop up. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it did. I think it's a really good question. Uh, <laughs> but as of right now, no, there's there's no correlation between the two for us, which is probably for the best. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. 
Good boy. And if, for those of you listening in, if you are watching the live stream on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn, uh, or you're listening to the podcast on Spotify or Apple, feel free to leave your um, – if you guys have any questions related about trees, uh, in uh, uh, leave it in the comment. Um, I think on, on Spotify you, you can comment or, or just on our YouTube or Facebook link, or LinkedIn – you can leave your your any questions in the comments, and um, uh, um, as as I or someone else from my team um, uh, sees any of those comments, uh, I I can make sure to um, forward any of those questions on to you, uh, um, Coven, as well that we can yeah, answer absolutely. answer in the comments of of the of the podcast. Uh, and so with the, with that, uh, to kind of tie a nice little bowl on this um, tree trimming, as I guess pe- people in your neighborhood, people tie bowls around trees. So I, I can kind of make that connection. <laughs> Did I tie a nice little bowl around this segment? <laughs> All these kind of pens, puns. Uh, but um, can you, uh, for listeners, comment on Combat's year-round tree trimming efforts and why that's important for customers and the grid because I'm sure most people will probably kind of think oh tree trimming is done in the spring or summer or fall but by and and, and this is a this is more this is a, a talking point that we we have from the, from the marketing team that that mm-hmm. wanted us to hire year round tree trimming and so can you um I also kind of speak to um, the the need also in the winter months uh, of, of 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 this important and kind of comment on its year-round tree trimming efforts and why that's important for customers and the grid. Absolutely, Daniel. Uh, so one of the big things that I guess I want to is that we have to trim year-round because we have so many trees that we don't we don't really get to limit it to one time of the year or another. So we we go until there's there's nothing left uh, to do as far as our, our our yearly cycle. And typically, I think we end up trimming right up until the new year. Um, but there there are a lot of reasons why you'd want to trim seasonally or or specifically in the winter. Um, but for the most part, we just have a lot of work to do when we want to make make sure that we're getting it done. Benefits to doing it in the winter is some species, you want to be cognizant of uh, exposing them to disease or, uh, you know, what, if you if you trim it while they're uh, dormant, then you don't have to worry about um, any kinds of issues with uh, knocking the tree during the growing season. So it gets a chance to heal up right away when it comes back in the spring. Another thing we run into uh, tree related is um, different animals that you might have out in the right of way. A big one being uh, a bat that might be roosting and um, and uh, reproducing during the year. So typically April through uh, the end of October, November, is uh is when the bats are they've got their pups they haven't yet gone into their caves to um hibernate for the winter and, or wherever their hibernacula may be um and so there are certain areas where we have to be very cognizant of what animals are using it whether it's bats whether it's birds um and we do take steps to go through and work with uh, uh fish and wildlife or illinois department of natural resources on where endangered and threatened species are um, and make sure that we're not causing any troubles there. Our environmental team does a great job of, of helping us out um, with making sure th- things progress. But there are a lot of reasons why we want to trim you around. The big one is just that there's so much work to do. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned um, uh, working with the um, Illinois wildlife and, 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 and making sure that the environmental work that Kemba does, especially when it comes to the tree trimming, uh, it, it, it's all like it, it's it's um, humane and safe for for um, animal for bats and and other wildlife animals. Because uh, even though I'm sure a lot of our listeners, I'm sure there's probably some listener out there that's either sh- that's either, either shouting at the headphones or might even put in the comments that. Um, might it might not like bats in some of the, the wildlife, but I'm sure we also have a lot of other 
uh, listeners that, you know, might like that or or might like these wildlife. And so um, I'm glad that that you had highlighted the importance of working with the Illinois, uh, I'm blanking on the the name of the. (laughs) the, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really powerful. We're going to take another, as uh, listeners probably hear, some background music that is coming up uh, in the background, and we'll take one um, another just quick ad break. Uh, the, and this next ad break will be familiar to uh, you, Kevin, as long with our main corporate um, partner here at Special Chronicles. Uh, and we'll, when we come back, we will talk all about the zoo bras, the zoo, the zoo program uh, with zoo bras. Yep, Zoo Pro. Yeah, sorry, can't talk today. <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> on SpecialChronicles.com. Support for Special Chronicles comes from Comet Energy Force Ambassador Program, the country's first energy efficient, the energy and solar efficiency education program designed and taught by people with disabilities. Learn more at specialchronicles.com slash comed. That's specialchronicles.com slash comed, where we have also included this podcast series, this link, and other comed social media and other comed resources. We'll include links to some 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 tree resources on there as well. <laughs> we are so grateful for comed to keep the power, keep the lights on, and keep all. Comed Radio is powering this podcast to, to stay powered on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hopefully, the marketing team uh, 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 likes that 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 ad break, <laughs> that little ad read. <laughs> What's well, funny? You I, said to keep I, the lights on, and then you almost like your second intuition for the next bit is to say to keep the lights on again because that's sort of the phrase, right? <laughs> 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 it's yeah so um but yeah yeah it, it's been seven years that come out has been a corporate partner uh of special chronicles and uh this this platform so we're, we're really mm-hmm. thankful for, and 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 grateful uh because if it wasn't for all um all uh supporters and sponsors then i i honestly wouldn't be able to keep podcasting out of my own pocket. So it's, it's it's really grateful. Um, With that, uh, the, the zoo brought, sorry, can't say that next one. That zoo program is, uh, this is a, this is another, just like the last segment, this is another new uh, topic that I, uh, and if, if I'm as 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 the podcast host in, in loading uh, on on this series, uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are are going to loan um, some energy, energy tips and tips and and loan new new topics. And so this is another exciting topic uh, that um, I know I'm just um, I'm I live in like the town that's next door to the Brookfield Zoo, or I think that they, they just renamed it's the Chicago. Brookfield Zoo. I think I I just yeah, I was coming logical society. Yeah, yeah. I was coming back from, from my from my um um um, um girlfriend's uh, um condo uh, uh, a a couple weeks ago, and I just I, I saw that they changed the the name on the sign. But with that, how how cutoffs from a local for you for you. Edge, uh, go to a local zoo. Can you kind of can you comment on 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 that on how cutoffs and and, and maybe kind of briefly for listeners define what cutoffs are and, and then go into how cu- cutoffs uh, from our local uh, foliage go to our, our, our local zoos. Yeah. So. Uh, the the cutoffs are basically any of the trimmings on the tree. We use specific species. So the animals love maple. They love mulberry, uh, willow. They go absolutely crazy for, which we don't find a ton of. But when we can, they love that. Um, and then there's just a handful of other species that the animals can eat. Those are their top three. 
Um, but basically when the guys are, are out pruning along the power lines uh, every year, uh, anything that's, you know, about the size of a half dollar or so, um, they, the, not really too much bigger or smaller that anything that's got leaves on it, or actually even during the winter, we'll give them stuff that doesn't have leaves on it just every other week during the winter instead of every week during the growing season. Um, but uh, we, we give them these, these limbs of the, the cuttings or the trimmings or, or the brows, if you, if you want, <laughs> it gets very confusing. I have a lot of people like my, my trimming contractors. They're like, what is brows? Like you call it brows. And I was like, well, that's what the zoo calls what they get, what it is when they give the animals, that's the end product, but you call it trimmings or <laughs> it's, it gets yeah. interesting, but yeah. So it's just the leafy cuttings of those particular species uh, or the ones that the animals are able to eat. We send them to both Lincoln Park uh, and uh, uh, Chicago Zoological Society or Brookfield. Um, and uh, and actually just last year in October, we added on Phillips Park Zoo in Aurora. So now we deliver to them, but we only deliver to them during the growing season because they're a much smaller zoo. They don't get a whole heck of a lot of it. It's just a, it's just a little like a grapple full. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm glad glad you, you marked that. I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be excited to learn about that. And as as we now talk a little bit more about about can you talk talk a little bit more about the zoo bras uh, uh, program, what what it is and where the select um, um Foliage trimmings are sent to our animal friends at, at the local zoo. I'm sure a lot a lot of our listeners um, uh, I have, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have gone to, to zoos. I know my, um, my mom actually got, um, got a zoo pass so she, she could, um, take my young niece and nephew, uh, or two grandkids to the, um, um, zoo. So I'm sure there's a lot of fam- families out there that are heading out to now that, that, that spring is here. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be heading out to the zoos in, in the spring, summer, fall months. Mm-hmm. Can you talk mm-hmm. about the, the zoo bras program and where the select um, foliage uh, trimmings are sent to our animal friends at the local zoos? Yeah, so you'd be surprised which animals actually get browsed. It's you'd think that it'd probably be the herbivores, right? But you know, we actually uh, I've seen I think at Lincoln Park. Uh, I'm not sure which zoo it was before I go speaking because they both have African wild dogs. <laughs> But they, I have a picture of the African wild dogs just going at this branch and pulling it apart. Uh, bears will play with it. Of course, the beavers love it, uh, which actually, uh, Daniel, can I, can I take a quick pause? I've, I've got a question for you, a little bit of a joke. Uh, what did the beavers <laughs> say? What did the beavers say to the tree as they were parting? Um, um, it's... News to me. I don't know. <laughs> it was nice gnawing you. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, nice. Oh. Nice gnawing. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So we we try to uh, locally source everything. So we don't want to send trucks everywhere to, to grab. But Brookfield sort of more for a little further south. And so uh, any trucks, uh, as they're trimming along the lines that uh, they have some browse, typically we trip, chip it and turn it into mulch using a, a wood chipper. It just goes in the back of a truck and then we send it off. Um, but uh, if they have those particular species, the, the maple, the willow or the mulberry, we have a special truck that comes along. It's got a really big grab on it. It reaches down. It grabs that browse puts it in the back of the truck into the bed. And then uh, the next morning, real bright and early before uh, the crowds start showing up at the zoo, they go to the the back entrance where the the commissary is for the animals. They'll drop off the brows. um, And then actually even at Lincoln Park, we drive through the zoo and at each little station, they'll take the brows and they drop it off at the front door and the keepers pull it in. And then if you're at the zoo and you're looking at the animals, you may see them. They've got uh, some, some branches from trees tied up. Those are either something that the zoo cut or they're, they're provided by us. Um, and we work very hard to make sure that they have as much as they, they possibly could, but it's just a nice way to recycle the vegetation clippings instead of having to, to chip them up and, uh, let them break down or go into somebody's yard. Just a nice little way. It gives the animal something to chew on. It gives them a little added nutrition. Um, and, uh, and 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 all in all, I think it gives them a little bit more of an interactive experience with their environment. Uh, awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Awesome. I, 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 it's really empowering, I think, for our listeners to hear about how how uh, Kamada is is working with our local zoos and and really helping to helping our animal friends to have something to to chew on to uh, that 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 I'll, I'll tweet I'll like kind of. Going back to what we talked about at uh, what you t- what we talked about at the beginning beginning of, of the episode about planting wanting wanted to plant in trees in your um, at at your home uh, taking those trees ta- which then taking the um, trimmings that we talked about it in the last segment to now um, bringing it to a zoo it, it's it's like a circle of life type of a uh, um, um, a moment. If, if we, uh, if I, um, well, I, I don't want this, this. This podcast is going is is also available on YouTube. I don't want to play um, Disney's <laughs> Circle of Life on the, the Lion King, but yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I, uh, listen, to us, you guys can all pause this podcast, go pull it up on Spotify, and just heal. And just listen to Sucker Life. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Um, so, I know some listener out there is, is going to go and, and pause this, go go listen, and come back. Um, when, with that, when I listen to it back, I'm going to queue it up so that I can do that. <laughs> wait, oh, you you going to queue up the the uh, the the this podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's you know that's what we should tell listeners. I'm, I'm I'm making notes of the the chapter markers, so when we get when when you when you get to like uh, thirty minutes into the episode, just uh, <laughs> we should put a little disclaimer. Get ready to queue up. So go like, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, yeah, play <laughs> play the song Circle of Life. Yeah, pause, pause, play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we we don't want to get any copyright issues. So I know in the past we have um not necessarily well not necessarily for music, but we 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 have had other um relations with AP other um I'm not going to go into, into the details, but other copyright related issues that we don't want to get into. <laughs> legal stuff is not fun. So with 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 that, I'm going to go and take one final break as you hear the background music um, um, I'm playing, hopefully in the background, and we'll take one final break, one final ad break mention. Support for Special Chronicles comes from United Airlines Bridge Disability Business Resource Group, connecting people of all abilities. Learn more on United's commitment to disability inclusion for employment and travel at specialchronicles.com slash United. That's specialchronicles.com slash United. And, oh, I, I should have faded that off more, more, more better, but... Um, just if I'll, you will, if our listeners are wondering, if you do go to specialchronicles.com slash United, uh, the, we, we cannot, I have to put a disclaimer that if, if you do go to, uh, specialchronicles.com slash United, we, uh, we do not offer you any discounts on airline travel. So I have to say that. Well, <laughs> I know, I know. That's that's not something that we were able to work out. I mean, I'm also employed by them, but it's that's not something that we were able to work out with with this. So just have to. Put it, I know. Maybe, maybe in the future. Maybe if um, <laughs> I don't know. Do you, can they do that for podcasts? Can they offer? Yeah. I I think anything's up for negotiation, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, um, yeah. Who knows? Maybe in the future, maybe, maybe we might be the first podcast to offer uh, our listeners uh, <laughs> a discount. I don't know. Who there knows? <laughs> I'm just putting it out there, and you know, I, I, I put stuff like, for example, these headphones I'm wearing, and this microphone. I mentioned my equipment I'm falling apart, 
And then no. I had a person know that that I'm um, donated to get new equipment. So stuff can happen. With that, in this final segment, because I know we're coming at, at about 39, well, about 40 minutes of 40 minutes of actual um, air time, not the pre-show, but 40 minutes. Uh, it's, I know, we, uh, but hey, you, you, you did tell me that you, you like to talk about trees, and anybody that's passionate about any t- whatever topic that you into um, is told um, it's totally fail, fail game. I don't know, I was, don't know what to, uh, tree kind of fun to make fail, but f- to, uh, mm-hmm. fail, yeah. Let's just uh, leave it alone. Let leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, <Okay. laughs> I, I like that. We're just gonna. What did you do? Are you gonna edit in groans every time I tell a joke? (laughs) You know, I'm just gonna play this. Uh, Oh, oh, oh! I hear it. I heard it. It took a little bit. Oh, it took a little. Yeah. Oh, that that and I'll and I'll uh, audience laughed up. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Gotta love Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, anyway, as we leaf along into the final segment, uh, this is the point of the uh, episode where we share uh, uh, social media plugs. Can you share with us where our listeners can follow ComEd on socials as well as the ComEd news release and any other uh, tree-related uh, resources for all uh, um, listeners? Yeah, so I think pretty reliable. We're available at ComEd on any social. Um, but also, I recommend that if you're interested in trees and knowing more about vegetation management, ComEd.com forward slash uh, trees is a great way to get information on planting the right tree in the right place, learning more about everything that vegetation management does, reporting uh, any any questions or, or issues that you may have. Um, and of course, you can always call 1-800-Edison-1 uh, com- <laughs> in order to get a hold of somebody from uh, our, our, our service team and, and sort of talk through any issues you may have uh, or questions with that. Awesome. Also, and I'll, I'll make sure to put those links in the show notes. And I, I just, I just want to just clarify the website and phone number for all listeners. Um, I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. So where, 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 wherever you are listening, you can uh, look down in the description for this episode, and uh, I'll, I'll put those links um, in there. But it's um, comment uh, if if our listeners want to learn more about trees. Should should have been, should be easy enough. Kymed.com slash trees. Correct. And the phone number is uh one eight hundred Edison. That's E D I S O N one. Correct. That that's uh awesome. And so I will um, I will, for those of you watching the live stream, I, I just put that up on the screen for you. Um, in fact, I am going to uh, make it e- even better for our listeners to um, you see it as any professional show. You see it going across the that little tickle there. Uh, as um, Kevin, you uh, you you just said, climate.com slash trees. Or you can call one eight hundred Edison one, and 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 so if all this was one one alone more, that's both of those um, can can be helpful. Yep, they should awesome. be helpful. And then at comment on any of our socials uh, gets you to our social media page. Awesome. So I'll make sure to put those links in the show notes. And oh, yeah, I hear some music going on in the other in the other room out, oh, outside of the go. studio. I know. I don't know what's going on. I, th- I think the TV is on. That's probably it. Uh, okay. With that, um, before we get, we get to the final question, which we're gonna relate, the, I'm, I'm gonna tweak that final question to we to relate it back to back to tree. Um, but um, do you have any final thoughts on your overall time here today on the Special Chronicles podcast that you would like to share with all uh, uh, our listeners? 
Well, I, I've had a ton of fun here, Daniel. I, I you know, I, I, like I said, I, I love trees, and I, I promised you I'd try to keep it short, and I don't, I don't know if I succeeded at that or if this counts as a success. You can tell me. But I, I, if I, if I may, I've got one more joke for you if you're up for it. Yeah, I, 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 I do. I, I, I think I'll, I'll listen to those. Um, always love, uh, love a good, uh, um, uh, joke. Okay, well, we've got Arbor Day coming up, so I want to make sure you all take care of your trees really, really well. Uh, so, do you know what a tree's favorite beverage is? Um, I would think that it's water, but I don't know. Yeah. In, in in reality, you're absolutely correct. But in in joke land, it's root beer. Um, Joe, you listen to us. Just just imagine that that applause. I mean that that laughter was all audience laughing at yeah, that tree. Yeah, of it, yeah. it, was a, it was a really good joke. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That, three jokes are hard to come by, so I hope you've enjoyed them. It is, yeah. And it wasn't just a dead joke. It was a true joke. And so I I, I will, um, in I fact, I made some notes of both that, that true joke and the other one, and I'll put it as a chapter marker. So if our listeners want to go and uh, fast and go and directly to, to that true joke, you guys can play that for all of your friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I, I may even actually, that, that tree joke, that last one that you said with the uh, whoop peel, I might even edit that one minute clip out just for Earth Day to, uh, and, and that tree joke will make our listeners want to go listen to I the uh, trees. Let me, yeah. I think, I don't know, I don't know about you, but is it, is that, d- d- does that sound like a plan to that that tree joke is 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 what will pull get pull, pull oh, oh that will leaf the listeners into want to listen to the full episode? <laughs> yeah, no, it absolutely would. I mean, I had an oak joke, but it was a corn a, a corny one. <laughs> oh, do you want to? S- s- Oh, that, that, that was a joke. <laughs> that one's a hard one. That one's a hard one. <laughs> was, it, was, no, I, it, it took me a while to, to, to get it. But, <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, 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 you, um, that you concluded the episode with, um, with a, a couple um, uh, uh, tree jokes. Because, um, well, first off, I think that's, uh, that that is what that's the clip that will let our listeners um, that will pull our listeners into want to listen to the full episode. But also, um, I think um, it's all about um, well, th- this podcast is all about not only in uh, informative but also entertaining disability conversations. And so, when we're not all about informing people, but we're also about entertaining as well. And oh, a combination of both, and yeah. and that's what you get here at uh, Special Chronicles in this podcast. With that, um, yeah, we've got one final question, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we've uh, we've got a bumble that let's let's go ahead and and roll that. We're not just athletes. We are the ambassadors of an uprising. Peaceful protesters. In a rebellion against anyone who has a fear of difference. Different. Difference. Our demands are equality. 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 Dignity. 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 And the recognition of our shared humanity. We will not stop or attempt anything less. Today, our world is more divided than ever. And coming together has never been more urgent. The revolution it's inclusion. Find out more at jointherevolution.org. Oh, so, just like trees, I'm my uh, waddle too. <laughs> good to stay hydrated. I know, it's just like trees, right? <laughs> trees need waddle, humans need waddle, a podcast still needs waddle. It's all, it's all good. 
Um, other since I attended the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in, in Abu Dhabi uh, for the past five years, I've been asking all of our guests one final question, and so I'll, I'll do the same with you. Inclusion, especially when it comes to DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. Inclusion is a big, uh, uh, and inclusion rev- revolution is a big message in Special Olympics. It's important here at Special Chronicles. I'm sure at Kymed. Uh, I'm going to kind of tweak a little tree related uh, uh, spin to this final question and ask okay. you as well what does inclusive tree efficiency mean to you? And you can take this. Uh, however you want to take it. Um, but as I'm sure you know, a, a lot of our listeners, a lot of our ComEd customers um, come from all different walks of life, some some in, uh, in, in poor um, uh, uh, towns or cities, some in, in wealthy, some right in the middle. And so you, you could take this question in any way that uh that you would like um but kind of kind of kind of speak to all different walks of walks of life uh, in all different types of economic classes but what does inclusive tree efficiency mean to you well daniel that's a that's a good question so inclusive tree uh inclusive trees i think kind of comes down down to that uh that's that that trees and you and me sort of title that we've got here. I, I think this plays in nicely. Trees mean a lot to everyone. They are good for our mental health. They provide oxygen. They reduce erosion. They provide uh, food in a lot of cases, or for us as well as as animals, uh, support quite a bit of life. Um, and they 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 grow in all shapes and sizes. But regardless of where they are or what they do for us. I think the big thing is that we're all entitled to enjoy them uh, in our own perspective, however that may be. And it's important for us to take the time to make sure that we get those trees for the next generation, but also those who, who maybe don't have the opportunity to get them for themselves. So making sure that we're building a robust canopy um, across the, the United States, wherever trees should be planted uh, or could be planted is is just a, a great way to come together uh, for the environment and with each other. And I can't tell you any time that I haven't had a great day working with anybody around a tree, under a tree, planting a tree, near a tree. It, I feel like I'm adding in a lot of fluff here, but you know, <laughs> Ultimately, I, I I really feel like getting out there, enjoying nature is something that should be for everybody. It should be accessible. It should be available. And the more that we take time to make sure that it's there for the future and for those of us who, who want to get out and enjoy it, uh, the, the better life will be. Awesome. Perfectly, perfectly put. Uh, that's a perfect way to wrap up this uh, trees for you and me uh, episode. And perfect kind of title, but perfect uh, uh, a summary of what we hope th- uh, that you, our listeners, have gained in an, in an informative, in an entertaining uh, uh, past 53 minutes. Uh, I know it's uh, we're gearing up on that one hour. Um, we'll just just shy, but um, that uh, thirty minutes turned into one hour, but that's perfectly perfectly uh, okay. Uh, and so, th- um, thank you again for coming coming on. Got a few final uh, reminder plugs for all of you listening uh, before we let you come in and get back to the rest of your evening, and and I get back to my evening as well. And all you listeners can get back to the rest of your morning, afternoon, day, whatever you are listening to this. Um, but I'd like to encourage all of you all of you listening to support our Special Chronicles 2024 Giving Campaign. Our goal uh, is to raise $15,000 because we have just celebrated our 15th anniversary at the end of last year. So, um, so we can operate our studio and continue our mission of giving respect and voice to people with disabilities. Uh, we are all about $7,000. We still need to raise about a little bit over $7,000 uh, uh, for this year. 
And so you can just visit specialchronicles.com, click on give now to donate today. And I'm, I'm not wearing it because we all, um, we all um, trying to be on brand, on, on brand for ComEd. But uh, if, um, I, if, if we didn't have to be on brand, um, I mean, technically, nobody said that we had to be on brand. But if we if we weren't on brand, I would be um, I would be sh- um, uh, showing our uh, Special Chronicles merch because uh, uh, you can shop our merch store and you can really show your support for Special Chronicles. Our uh, Special Chronicles store is managed by uh, by Outshine Labels. We have T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, candles. Who would have thunk? candles but yes we have uh uh you can shop our, our merch store knowing that 60 percent that's six euro 60 percent of the profits will support special chronicles you can visit our merch store at specialchronicles.com slash shop that's specialchronicles.com slash shop and covering even you and your coworkers can head on over there uh oh, the, the i have to say uh and I, I'm not just saying this because 60 percent of the profits go to support special chronicles, but all our t-shirts and our hoodies are, are actually comfy. Like I mean, there's times where I'm just wearing the, our, our, our disabled voices metal uh, 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 hoodie just around the house, and like I, uh, I and it, it gets to the evening, and I'm like, I don't want to take this off because this is comfy. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, our uh, disabled voices matter. Um, I, I, I have heard from a, from um, uh, a number of you listeners that actually like that that this um, this this much collection that we have, and so please go to specialchronicles.com slash shop. Uh, one final reminder, you can visit uh, specialchronicles.com. Uh, keep following the Special Chronicles podcast or go ahead and tap that follow button on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, YouTube, wherever you all you listen to your podcast. Go tap that follow button uh, so you don't miss all original content that will help you make impactful, inclusive connections in your life through our podcast. Visit specialchronicles.com. Again, new episodes will drop every Monday. Uh, at 9 a.m. Central Time, and uh, you can also sus- um, you can subscribe to our newsletter, uh, where we'll give you um, bonus content and keep you updated on some of our favorite episodes from the past month. Though. And uh, you, uh, you can also stream our archives of over 750 episodes absolutely for free. And so, yeah, just uh, uh, go ahead and visit specialchronicles.com for links to follow Special Chronicles on uh, on Insta, on social media, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, th- thank you again, Calvin, for taking the time to come on the this, this Special Chronicles podcast and our Energy Fall series. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Daniel, for having me. It was a ton of fun. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, until next week, we've got some exciting content coming to you guys this month of April, including you do not want to miss the at the um the, the, in uh, two weeks from the time that this episode drops, uh, the uh, uh, chief customer officer at United Airlines, uh, Linda Jojo, is coming on for a a one hour conversation that you do not want to miss. Again, the chief customer officer at United Airlines, you do not want to miss. So excited for you all to hear this conversation. So um, stay, keep following the podcast. Uh, until then, we never choose to include and disabled voices. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Special Chronicles podcast. Our podcast was produced by Daniel Smukowski on the Special Chronicles Network. Follow Special Chronicles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review Special Chronicles on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our website, specialchronicles.com, where you can stream our archives of over 500 episodes for absolutely for free. Also, there's a list of our favorites, original series, award-winning columns, and blogs. And sign up for our newsletter to bonus content over to your inbox. Again, specialchronicles.com. Special Chronicles is hosted by Podbean Podcast Hosting. Our live streams are powered by StreamYard. Thanks, as always, to our business manager, Adam Smukowski, who always...
encourages us to never give up. I'm Daniel Smukowski, back next week with more stories. Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people with special needs.